fellow fan geeks, it's your fangirl Tally, and it's time for some more FG1. Are you ready? Season 2, Episode 7? Let's do this. Those are... Jack, it may as well be the moon out here. If there ever was anybody home, they've been gone a hundred thousand years or more. This world is most definitely Tarlock. Though it once supported life, it is now extinct. Well, the probe picked up an EM source coming from something. Mm -mm. My guess, that thing. Random orb. Is this marble? Got the same EM frequencies we picked up from the probe. Sir, this artifact or whatever it is is definitely the source. Are we in danger? No, sir, I don't think so. Not at the moment. But, I mean, this is incredible. If Daniel's right, this artifact has been doing this since Neanderthals were still a dominant species on Earth. Oh, that takes me back. Uh. Look at this writing of some kind. It's so tiny. What does it do? Well, it's maintaining an interior temperature of 33 degrees Fahrenheit. It's generating an electromagnetic field and emitting small amounts of alpha, gamma, and delta radiation. Well, I knew that. Why does it do that? I don't know. I'm trying to make a threat assessment here, Captain. Uh, I don't know what it is, sir. But it's got a power source more advanced than anything we've ever come across, including the glow old. It's a time capsule. Well, that's an educated guess, but imagine your civilization is facing a great cataclysm. The end is coming, you know it. I mean, wouldn't you leave something behind? Something that told whoever came after who you were? Or how you died. Yes. I mean, imagine what you could learn about your own fate. fate. When a Goal's world is taken by another in battle, he will sometimes leave behind the means to destroy the Conqueror. You think it might be a booby trap? Booby? Well, I, I don't think we're talking about the gold here. I mean, whoever the civilization was, they went to great pains to leave this artifact behind. Like a message in a bottle. You buying this, Teal? The benefit may outweigh the risk. Earth could sure use a power source that lasts for thousands of years. All right, pack it up. Let's go home. Yes, sir. <sighs> Sorry, guys. What's this? That's not good. Uh oh. Sir, I recommend level three precautions. Wormhole disengaged. Support teams go. Careful with it, it's heavy. Start a spectral analysis right away. Oh, and input a detailed imaging of the outer surface into the computer. Everything goes planned, Colonel. Oh, one small step, one giant leap, that kind of stuff, sir. We'll debrief in one hour. Welcome home, Master G1. One second. I have to go through some sort of light. Like Cleansing situation. If they were off on oh, some sort of two more elements debris like planet. To... Lieutenant, I'd like to record this. Whatever you say, Captain. Try to relax, Graham, or it's gonna be a long day. You know, I don't think it's the artifact. He gets nervous like that every time he's around you. <laughs> Maybe a crush. Uh, we're recording. Recording right, right now. Thank you, Lieutenant. Oops. Oops. Hey, the artifact. Notice the writing. So tiny it can't be read by the naked eye. What does it say? 
Uh, we think it's a set of instructions. On how to... Open it. We think it, uh, we think it opens. Well, I'm, I'm sure there's much more to it than that. I mean, there's the equivalent of a thousand pages of text on the exterior surface alone. What about the object's interior? We know very little. Dr. Fraser is supervising a positron emission topography right now. You know, I have the highest respect for your abilities. But the NID wants a look at the thing. Well, I recommend against shipping the artifact anywhere just yet, General. Since Daniel Jackson's theory on the orb's function has yet to be confirmed, it is best for it to remain in close proximity to the Stargate, at least for the moment. You're scheduled to visit P4G881. Which is a primordial world with absolutely no civilization whatsoever, and therefore no need to bring along an archaeologist. I'm willing to delay that mission for 24 hours in order to confirm your theory. That's not enough time. But we'll take it. Thank you. Try another x-ray series. Academia, Daniel. Y axis this time. Sam. Yeah. Okay. Up until now, I've been sort of going on the assumption that this is a sort of page one. It's relatively isolated from the other groupings. Now I'm thinking it's numerical. Yeah, maybe the basis of their mathematics. Right. That's what I thought. So if these smaller symbols represent exponents then this sequence grows exponentially to become a very big number right and that is information i can't use good morning campers sleep well i did oh it can't be morning ah but it is we ship out at oh 1300 hours okay jack talk to general hammond nope i want you both rested and ready to go that's an order Yes, sir. Jack, come on. Daniel, SG-1 is a field unit. You know that. Can't have it both ways. When we get back, you can visit. As if NID hasn't shown up. We've got a spike, uh, an EM spike across the wide band. What? Interior temperature is increasing 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Captain? I don't know, sir. I don't think we've done anything. Maybe we woke it up. 60 degrees. Radiation levels? Uh, alpha particle generation within the object's magnetic field has increased for 600%. Sir, I recommend we return the artifact to P5C353 now. Go tell them to start dialing. Go. 100 degrees. Any idea what we're dealing with here? No, sir. <gasps> I think we can rule out time capsule. What the hell would they do? Start dialing in P5C353 right away. By uh, whose order? Colonel O'Neill. Do it. Yes, sir. Dr. Jackson. This is the artifact, sir. Something's wrong. Temperature is still increasing. 110 degrees. We'll need to put our suits back on. No, there's no time for that. We'll just open the gate and throw it back through. Yo, give me a hand here. Does not wish to be removed. Oh, that's too damn bad. Chevron six encoded. On the way, people. Chevron 7, locked. The hell? Get out of there! Get security down there. Put the base on full alert. We need a medical team. Security to the embarkation room. Medical team to the embarkation room. Here. 
kill it. Sir, the uh, Stargate. Shut it down. Shut it down. Kill it. Right through his shoulder into the concrete. Oh my god. Get something to support his legs. Yes, sir. What can you tell me? I don't know, but it's still hot. Be careful. Temperature's 133 and holding. This wound is too clean. There should be blood. I, I don't know why there was a more trauma. Where the hell is Teal? It's going right to the scapula. Colonel, why are Teal? you. Shoot it! Sir! Shoot it! I suggest you observe from the control room. Everybody out of here! Hilk, fire when ready. With respect, General, this is a mistake. What? Because we don't know how much of that staff energy will be transferred through the object into the kernel. Your objection is not. Okay. Man tells you to do something like that, you do it. Especially a man who is in that position and been through the things he's been through. He knows what he's saying. He's been tortured before. No change. Sir, that absorbed the energy. Weapon is ineffective. I shall try another. No! Sir, that staff energy had to have gone somewhere. We could be feeding it what it wants for all we know. I want a cutting torch down. If it's made of the same non terrestrial alloys as the shell on the orb itself, then it is several hundred times stronger than steel. Sir, with your permission. Hello, Neil. This is going to take some time. give a damn what Colonel Mayborn has to say on the subject. I've made my decision. Mayborn. Unless I'm ordered to do otherwise, I'm not allowing anyone in or out of this facility until we can send the damn thing back where it came from. No, General. Thank you. The NID people want to see it. Even knowing what it's done to the Colonel? Especially knowing what it's done to the Colonel. They're hoping we've found some kind of weapon we can one day use against the ghoul. All I can tell them is what it isn't. General, I don't know what to say. I wanted the artifact to be something wonderful. You have nothing to apologize for, son. We brought things back from all over the galaxy. One of them's finally snapped us in the ass. We managed to collect a significant amount of data before it hit the fan, sir. Then I suggest you get to it. Dismissed. This is Hammond. Lock up the mountain. Authorization code red dash beta. Initiate wildfire. That doesn't sound good. Attention. Level four quarantine is now in effect. Switching to internal power and life support. You know, now quarantine means something totally different different just just has a different end. What? I know. You have a very high fever. It's being caused by an infection. I'm going to give you a broad spectrum antibiotic to help fight it. The artifact's internal temperature just leveled off at 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Sergeant. Your progress here is unsatisfactory. Can't go any faster, sir. This is the hardest stuff I've ever come across. I will beg you no further. We're going to need everyone's help. 
Colonel O'Neill is alive, but obviously he's in trouble. The data we've managed to get Sorry, guys. Is all on the base computer. It's not much, but it's all we have. Use it. Don't rule anything out and don't make any assumptions. I'll be leading the translation team. Now, we'll be working out of the astrophysics lab, but we're all going to have to work together on this one. Any questions? So, obviously, we're dealing with a weapon. That's an assumption, Captain. All right, let's get to work. Don't make any assumptions. That's an assumption. How is he? He's developed an infection. I've got him pumped full of antibiotics, which amazingly seem to have slowed his progress. Why is that amazing? I think you should see this. It's mobile like a bacteria, but small like a virus and slightly radioactive. Definitely alien. And they also seem to bond in chains. And it's infected the colonel. This is why I wanted you to see it. I took this from a section of Colonel O'Neill's uniform around his wound. Well, what are you saying? It's infected his clothes as well as living tissue? And it's metabolizing the fibers exactly as if it was living tissue, like an indiscriminate form of necrotizing fasciitis. Flesh-eating disease. Okay, you said slightly radioactive. Yeah. Lieutenant, we used ultraviolet when we were performing tests on the iris' structural integrity. Right. Uh, let's get some UV units in the gate room. Teal'c, Colonel, it's gonna get a little dark in there for just a few seconds while we try something. Infecting the whole freaking place. Captain Carter? What's happening to me? This organism can eat through virtually any substance, even concrete. This entire complex is made of concrete. Worse than that, we've already determined that it's got a taste for the base wiring, which means that it's going to affect, or rather infect, our computers and communications. Then we need to kill it. How do we do that? We've sprayed around the base computer mainframe with a sort of pesticide, but it hasn't even slowed the organism down. What was that you just gave me? Tetracycline. It's kept the infection at bay in Colonel O'Neill, and it seems to work prophylactically in everyone else I've managed to get a shot into. But, sir, I'll need more... Absolutely not. A wildfire directive means nothing in or out. You know that. Sir, Lieutenant Simmons' infection is even more far gone than Colonel O'Neill's. But he's allergic to tetracycline. And none of the alternatives I have on base... Don't make me repeat myself, Doctor. With your permission, sir, I'd better get back to the infirmary. Flushing. Captain. Sir? I need your honest assessment. Can we beat this thing? Well, like the Colonel always says, never give up, right? I'm not sure, sir. Maybe it's time we consider evacuating personnel through the Stargate. I thought of that, but to where? There's no guarantee that we can stop the organism from coming through the gate along with us. I don't think we have the right to infect another world. Well, there are a number of uninhabited worlds we could gate through. Albeit most are uninhabited for good reason. Even if we could evacuate a number of survivors, practically every one of us is now infected by the organism to some degree. Without antibiotics, we'd all be like Lieutenant Simmons by now. 
The survivors would run out of supplies within a few days. At least they'd have that much time to find a solution. It's not worth the risk, in my opinion, sir. We don't even know what the orb would do if we tried to activate the Stargate again. Very well. We'll make our stand right here, Captain. Yes, sir. It won't take us without a fight, sir. Damn right. Undomesticated equines could not remove me. Undomesticated equines. Could... Oh, I love Wild that. Horses, Wild. It's... Oh, undomesticated equines. That needs... That's a joke. He made a joke. He told a joke. I must be dying. <laughs> no, that's gotta go in the merch shop, babe. Don't make me laugh. Very well. You're a good man, my friend. As are you, my friend. You're gonna make me cry. Sir? Just about through here. It's moving! <laughs> Will not allow us to free you, O'Neill. No. <laughs> Poor Siler. Presuming this is page one, and presuming this sequence is of whole numbers that indicates exponential growth. What does that mean? Well, it, it could represent the growth pattern of the alien organism. And so far, its spread has followed an exponential curve. All right. So from that, we can extrapolate that it's a warning. This organism will continue to grow and expand exponentially until... what? Until we die? I mean, it... If that's what it says, what's the point of saying it? Okay, try, try turning the page. Maybe the answer's there. Right. How's the pain? It's not too bad. Well, I'm gonna give you something for it anyway. Hello, Janet. Hey. If you see Captain Carter... Tell you what, Lieutenant. She has to come down in a couple of hours for her booster, so... I'll make sure I send her over. Tilk's staff class gave the organism energy it needed to spread like this. It's reproducing because we fed it. Damn, why did I let them do that? Okay, so it feeds on energy. How do we use that? It feeds on everything. Have the CO2 levels gone up? Yeah, but the scrubbers are handling it. Like fire. 
Add energy, a fire burns hotter. Add fuel, it burns longer. But it can't live without one thing. Oxygen. Yes. We can't either. Yeah, but at least we can slow it down. What's happened? It's gotten into our computers. Keep working. I can hear you. We can't come this way, Captain. It's eating through steam pipe. But the elevators work. something what is he doing Dilk is trying to stop the spread of the organism at the source tell him to stop why it seems to be working only because the fire is temporarily consuming the oxygen in the room it feeds on energy sir I'm asking you to trust me deal stand out we're going to try another approach The organism needs oxygen to reproduce. Now, since we're on internal power and life support, we can adjust the CO2 scrubbers and lower the oxygen levels. How long are we talking? We'll start at 8%, but we have to start now. Do it. Yes, sir. General Hammond, sir. I think you should see this. Auto self-destruct has been initiated. I didn't touch a thing. The self-destruct countdown just started on its own. General? In the event of containment failure, wildfire kicks in automatically. Sir, we have to deactivate the auto-destruct. We have a responsibility to make sure the organism does not leave the mountain, Captain. With all due respect, sir, I don't think you understand. It can feed on the energy from a staff blast. How far do you think it will spread if the auto-destruct goes off? I need two officers to override. Wow! That douche! The organism's invaded our computers. They won't recognize our codes. The device's internal clock has been activated. We can't stop it without the computer. And in just under three hours, the organism will be fed enough energy to spread across the face of the Earth. Your idea seems to be working. Yeah, slowed the progress of the organism by almost 90%. Yeah, well, don't jump up and down now or you'll get my other patients all excited. You know, e even in a completely anaerobic environment, the organism just goes dormant. All we've done is buy ourselves a little time before... I gotta get back to work. Yeah, well, before you do, if you wouldn't mind stopping by to see Lieutenant Simmons. How's he doing? Carter. 
We're fighting this thing, Graham. You just gotta hang in there, okay? Flora, I just wanted to say how much <clears throat> How am I doing so far? I'm just fine. symbols on the artifact. Yes, it is. It's trying to communicate with us. I, I think what we thought was gibberish on all the computers was actually the alien's attempt to communicate with us. Maybe, but the symbols you're seeing could also be from the random files from our earlier research. No, see, that's impossible. See, I didn't start working on this sequence until after the computers went down. Assuming you're right, what are they trying to communicate? Well, they could be saying, take me to your leader, for all I know. I have no idea. The point is that they're trying. We haven't even begun to consider that what we're up against here is an alien intelligence. We've treated it like a, like a disease, like a plague. Not once have we stopped to listen. How do we do that? We let it grow. What? We increase the oxygen levels even higher than normal. We hit it with another staff weapon blast. We let it do what it's been trying to do. The exact opposite of the advice you've been giving me up to now. Which is it, Captain? General, sir, we both know what will happen if we don't try something. One isn't working. Try the other. Dr. Fraser says the organism bonds together in chains. What if it's only capable of expressing that intelligence once it reaches critical mass? Well, even if you're right and we let it take over the computers, it's going to be communicating in a language that I can't translate without a point of reference. Maybe Colonel O'Neill didn't just get in the way. Dr. Fraser said there was no blood. There is practically no trauma around that wound. And yet with the force it struck him, that's just not possible. Unless it did it on purpose. Yes. We have to cut off his medication, sir. Are you out of your mind? If you do so, O'Neill will die. He'd want us to try this. I know it. Communicate with the organism through Jack. Yes. I think that's what it's been trying to do all along. Of course. Oxygen levels now 30% above normal. Sir? Sir, I don't know if what we're about to try is a good idea or not. But you have a right to know. You might not survive it.
creepy. It is truly a strange feeling. Colonel? Yes. He is here. This is weird. Who else are we talking to? We are also here. Who are we? My name is Hammond. Yes. O'Neill knows. Then you should also know we mean you no harm. You awoke us. We have only recently become aware of your existence. You would have returned us to our former world. We believed you were a threat to us. We feared you. And your fear would have destroyed us. Millennia ago, our world was dying. We could no longer live there. For this reason, we created the orb. Where you've slept for a hundred thousand years. Yes, Daniel. Waiting for someone to come along like us and take you through the Stargate. So it was written on the orb. Once exposed to the atmosphere of a living world, we went forth. And multiplied. So it was written. Auto self-destruct in four minutes. We cannot go back. And we cannot allow you to stay. O'Neill feels this as well. However, you have allowed us no alternatives. General, we're almost out of time. This place, admittedly out of our ignorance, is about to be destroyed by an explosion. Such energy only serves to nourish us. We will multiply and consume your world. If you would allow us to restore our communications, we could stop that from happening. We would survive. O'Neill desires this as well. He wishes to live. But what of us? Before G881. It's it's primordial. Lots of oxygen and sunlight, like this world was a quarter billion years ago. Sir, we can't open the Stargate without the computers. You would send us there. Through your Stargate. We would. For what reason? So that we both may survive. Take you there ourselves. Please. They are considering. Everything just shut down. God help us. Auto self destructing in two minutes. Sir, sir, I think the computers are rebooting. Start dialing P4G881 as soon as they're up. Yes, sir. Auto self-destructing. One minute, 30 seconds. Chevron 1 engaged. Chevron 2 engaged. Chevron 3 engaged. Chevron 4 engaged. Auto self 
self-destructed. One minute. Chevron 5 engaged. Chevron 6 engaged. Chevron 7 locked. Auto self destructed. 30 seconds. Why didn't they shut that down? Destruct is aborted. Auto self destruct aborted. Really? Nice work. Yeah. It was good to see you alive and well again. Welcome back, Jack. I thought you were gone for good, sir. Me too. Wild horses, Captain. <laughs> Domesticated equines. Domesticated equines. Oh, I love it. All right, guys. I love it. Comment below. Let me know. What did you think? As always, please remember to hit the like button and to subscribe if you're not already a member. Remember to hit that notification bell with your notifications turned on so that you know every time we drop a new video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>